do you really know do you really know who you are ask yourself that question because one of the i think one of the saddest things i've come across over the years is i've come across a tremendous amount of people that don't seem to know themselves that well and at first when i started noticing this i thought it was you know people pretending and over the years and when i say over the years i mean since around 2012 when i really started to notice that a lot of people didn't know who they were people would come to me and they would ask me my advice about what they should do in life and i found that to be very interesting because i've always known since a very young age i've always known what i wanted to do and what i've wanted to do has changed since my childhood nonetheless i've never had to ask anybody what should i do what should i do for a living where should i stay where should i go who should i be now i've gone through a tremendous amount of uh pain in my life a tremendous amount of pain at a very young age and as i went through the pain in my life i think it was the pain that woke me up to who i truly was on the inside eventually because it wasn't always like that you know my dad was a very abusive man we grew up in environments that didn't necessarily promote happiness and i wouldn't wish that on anybody but i truly believe that pain is what eventually woke me up to realize who i truly was now one thing about it when i was in when i was in kindergarten up until about the 7th grade i didn't really know who i was and because i didn't know who i was i was always worried about what other people thought about me i mean i literally remember walking into the lunch room every single day and right before i entered the lunch room i would say this mental prayer please god don't let these kids pick at me today don't make don't let them make fun of my haircut don't let them make fun of my clothing and so i learned to be invisible so that i wouldn't get laughed at and that didn't work because your boy still got laughed at <laughs> and i was one of those anxious kids i had a tremendous amount of stress on my plate at a very young age because i always had something crazy going on at the house you know i'd be in school and you know kids would be making fun of me and i'm sitting there thinking to myself like damn these people are so cruel you know we just had to run out of the house last night cuz my dad got drunk and he wanted to kill everybody none of those kids knew that though and so i went from being someone that was always in their head worried about what other people thought about them to someone that stopped caring 
but more in a negative way. Like I became the predator instead of the prey. Now I didn't consciously lash out at people, but I made a decision in my mind that if anybody said anything disrespectful to me, we were going to fight. We were going to duke it out. And not many people bothered me, I found, because I made that decision. But I always tried my best to be cool with everybody. But I just made up my mind that I wasn't going to allow anybody to bully me. I wasn't going to allow these people to make me feel inferior. And sometimes people would try. And and I've had my fair share of fights over the years as a kid and even as a young adult. And a lot of the things that I got into, I got into because I was living with a, a false sense of who I was. You see, I thought I was a street kid. And although I grew up in very colorful neighborhoods, I can't deny that my mother, despite our violent upbringing in the household due to my father, I can't deny that my mother taught us right from wrong. And the things I found myself getting into later on in life, I got into those things because I made the choice. And so I made the choice and went to sleep. I made the choice. I came home from high school one day and I made a choice, a conscious choice to be a tough guy. And then I went to sleep and I started believing that's who I was. And when I say I went to sleep, I mean, I went to sleep in my life and I started believing that I was actually that tough kid that I made up my mind to be. And I, I truly wasn't, but I was under hypnosis and we all are to some degree, but I was under hypnosis. But one thing about it, although I went under a hypnotic spell that taught me to be a street kid, the one thing I can say is that I was never afraid of making a decision. And just like I went to sleep at 16 after I made a decision to be a street kid at the age of 27, I made another decision that I was tired of blaming other people for my problems. And I said, I'm going to live as if I'm 100% responsible for the quality of my life experience. And that meant that I couldn't blame anybody about anything. I couldn't put the blame. If my life wasn't working, I couldn't put the blame on my father anymore. I couldn't put the blame on the world. Couldn't blame the white man. Couldn't blame the black man. Couldn't blame anybody but myself. That was a very hard thing to do, but it was the only way that I knew I could be mentally and emotionally and even financially free. It was the only way that I could be free. In that decision to walk away what I always talk about, which was a victim mentality. A lot of people don't like it. They don't like when I say victim mentality because they got one. You only trigger by me saying victim mentality. If you have a victim mentality, that's the only way you're really offended by that. Think about it. Why else would you be offended by it? But I made this firm decision that I was going to abandon the victim mentality that I was going to start consciously creating my reality. And although that was a hard, I won't say hard. It was challenging rather. It was a challenging decision, but after I made it, I knew I had to stick with it. And I've been living that way ever since. And that was when I was 27. And at the recording of this video uh, in one week, or in a couple of days, my age will be 40. So I broke away from the institution of obligation. And I broke away from the victim mentality many years ago. 
Now, fast forward to today and to cover the, the years that uh, has led up to where I am now when I started to improve the quality of my life experience, I made a commitment to be there to guide other people along the way of their journey. And after I've talked to so many people throughout the years, one of the things that I keep seeing come up is that people really don't know who they are. Even at an older age, a lot of people don't know who they are. And I can tell because a person that really doesn't know who they are, you're going to argue against this. And if you argue against this, I'm going to also say you don't know who you are. I'm going to just put that out there. But a person that doesn't really know who they are is paralyzed by indecision. And or they are constantly seeking validation from other people constantly asking other people what they think they should do. Hey, what do you think I should do? Hey, what do you think I should do? Do you think I should buy this? Do you think I should buy that? Now, that might seem innocent to you, but I'm here to tell you that behind those questions resides a world of insecurity. You might be thinking to yourself that there's nothing wrong with asking people what they think about a thing or getting an opinion from somebody else. You might think there's nothing wrong with that. And I agree, there is nothing wrong with getting opinions from other people. But when you are paralyzed with indecision because you are waiting on somebody else to give you their opinion about a thing, I would argue that you're only doing that because you don't truly know who you are. See, when you know who you truly are, you know what you stand for. And when you know what you stand for, you don't get too many external opinions. When it comes to who you are, when it comes to what you're going to do for a living, when it comes to who you're going to marry or not marry, when it comes to what you do for work, maybe I just said that, when it comes to how you're going to dress even. Hey, what do you think about this shirt? Hey, what do you think about this shirt? I love telling people, uh, No, what do you think about that shirt? You're the one wearing it. Are you buying the shirt for me? You see what I'm saying? Are you going to work for me? Because if you're going to work for me, I'll definitely tell you what you should do for work. If you are buying that home for me, then I'll tell you what type of home I want to see. If you're buying that vehicle for me, I'll tell you what type of vehicle you need to go get. You see, there are some people out there and we all know people and maybe it's you. Don't know how to make a decision to save their life. Some people I've talked to that are so indecisive that I often wonder how did they make it to be this old? How? How? These type of people are their own worst enemy. The reason why I know that is because that is who I was. I was my own worst enemy. And here I am today. I went from somebody that was already always worried about what other people think about me I was always worried as a kid. Oh, what are you going to think about my shirt, my shoes, my haircut? My, ah. When I gave all that up, at the, I, and it took me till I was 27 years old. So I'm not picking on anybody like in this situation. I'm just bringing awareness to it. 
so you can identify what's going on inside of yourself or with other people. But when I made up my mind that I was done playing the role of a victim, I also made up my mind that I was done giving any energy to what other people thought about me. And it's a very peaceful way to live. Ah, I can't even tell you how peaceful it is. It doesn't mean that everything you choose for yourself is going to work out. It just means that regardless of what happens, you feel good about it because you know you made the decision. And it's taught me to trust in myself. I trust my opinion of my life more than I trust anybody else's opinion of my life, with all due respect. It's taught me a tremendous amount of self-love. I'm extremely self-motivated because of it. And when you live as if you are 100% responsible, For the quality of your life experience, you're going to feel like you are living in heaven every day, even on your worst days. Because when you know who you are, you now start to appreciate your journey. You now start to appreciate your own company. You don't need to do drugs or even drink alcohol in order to alter your state of consciousness because you understand that you can alter your state of consciousness without those substances. And that's why I meditate so much because I love playing with different states of consciousness. I love exploring different levels of myself without any drugs, without any alcohol. There ain't one person on the face of the earth that I call and ask their opinion every day. It just doesn't happen. 99.9% of the time, I'm just going through life choosing things and then just being able to follow through with the things that I've chosen. And it's a very beautiful life to live that way. It's really amazing. Like, it's real peaceful. When you know who you are as an individual, you don't have any drama like that in your life. Like, you just don't have any drama. And that might be because, well, because you don't have any drama, you find yourself to yourself most of the time. I'm to myself most of the time. No drama. You feel good about who you are. You feel good about where you are, even if where you are is not where you want to be forever. But you appreciate it because you know that this is just a moment in time. This is just a moment in time that we're having right now. This is all good. Everything is good. And so in the next breath that you take, see how far you breathe deeply inside of yourself. If you're shallow breathing, it's because you don't really know who you are. (laughs) You might be like, man, that has nothing to do with each other. Yes, it does. In that moment, if you're not able to breathe deeply, you're breathing very shallow and shallow breathing comes from anxiety and anxiety comes from overthinking. And the only reason why you're overthinking is because you don't really know who you truly are in this present moment. That's why I practice deep breathing. That's why I practice meditation. 
That's why one of the most powerful things you can do to improve the quality of your life experience is to breathe, sit still, and observe yourself. Come to know who you truly are. So many people tell me about, you know, different things that they believe in. And and I look at the person and I'm just like, you're not making a really good case for that thing that you say you believe in. Because first of all, you can't even control yourself. So how am I supposed to follow you to the promised land if you can't even control yourself? You're always seeking validation from an external source. How can, why would I follow you? Why would I trust what you're seeing? Why would I replicate what you're doing when you're not even living the way I would like to live? No disrespect, just being honest. When you know who you truly are as an individual, you are peaceful on, on the inside. It doesn't mean that you denounce materialism either. I love material things. I love buying nice clothes, jewelry. I, I love homes. I love property. I love, I love all those things. I know who I am. When I first had my spiritual awakening, I denounced all that stuff. But now I'm just like, why not? When you know who you truly are, the things that you have don't make you or break you. Ooh. The same Robbie that you're looking at right now with this smile on his face is the same smile I had on my face 12 years ago when I didn't have a dime to my name. I learned to be happy broke. And the reason why I was happy broke is because I just I knew who I was. I knew what my value was. I knew what I was worth. I knew what was going to happen before it started happening. I manifested. Not only did I manifest this life, but I manifested the new version of myself. And if you are willing to sit still, observe yourself, and then give yourself a command, the quality of your life experience will literally be in the palm of your hand. Observe yourself, meditate, become still, sit, listen, listen to your own thoughts, observe your own emotions, be willing to discover who you truly are, and you will never, ever struggle with indecision again. It's Robbie Cornelius. Always encouraging you to master your mind and make money online. And if you want more of this type of content, there's only one place to go. It's webassetgroup.com.